Hello everyone, my name's Rachel from Happy Silver People. A big warm welcome if you haven't joined me before. Today I'm going to be talking about some deliciously dark foods and I'm going to start with one that you're probably familiar with which is dark chocolate. So dark chocolate uh, has of course the benefits of the cocoa and those are supposed to be uh, perhaps lowering our blood pressure and maybe helping with low mood and stress. And dark chocolate has a higher cocoa content and lower sugar, so therefore should have a, a, a bit more of these benefits. Probably you're looking at, at dark chocolate that's got a minimum of 80% cocoa. I've got a couple of examples here. Uh, this one's Green and Blacks with 85, and this one is uh, from Sainsbury's with 90. So either fair trade or with a certification from the Rainforest Alliance, so that you know they've got good provenance. So either of these might be a good way to start. There's still some sweetness to the chocolate, but you're also getting perhaps a little bit more of the benefit if you're having maybe a square a day. If you want to go the whole hog, uh, not so easy to track down 100%, but this one's from Marks and Spencers. So 100% cocoa, uh, very dark chocolate. It's again fair trade, you can see up there. This one I've you can see I've been nibbling at already. Uh, so that's uh, the size of a square. Uh, so I'd have one of these every night before I go to bed um, for medicinal purposes, of course. It doesn't keep me awake. It hasn't got high caffeine content. Um, chocolate's still very pleasant to eat, but I imagine it might take a little bit of getting used to. Our taste buds change as we get older. So you might find that if in the past you found this a bit bitter, uh, you might find actually you, you really enjoy it now. So that's my first deliciously dark food, dark chocolate. A nice way to begin. The second and the third actually are a bit of um, love-hate foods. So uh, as you could probably guess, I'm gonna cover Marmite as a deliciously dark food. Now Marmite, I didn't like when I was growing up. I didn't eat it, um, I didn't like the taste, but I wonder now if it was because I used to put it on too thickly. Now I love it, I eat it um, several times a week quite a thin layer, uh, but this is yeast extract and it was actually discovered in 1902 as a byproduct from the brewing process. Again, it's got good history. Uh, it's got lots of um, B vitamins in it, but particularly B12 is important because that's the vitamin that uh, vegetarians and vegans can't get very easily in their diet. So uh, B vitamins here in Marmite, B vitamins are very good for your, your brain and your heart. So I would recommend if you perhaps didn't like it when you were younger, go back to it, try it again. It is good for you and it's obviously great on, on toast and, and uh, in all sorts of different ways. Um, they also think that perhaps uh, Marmite is good as an insect repellent, not for rubbing on your skin, but if you eat it regularly, it, there will be a taste on your skin that insects don't like, so they may stay away from you. So I think that's another really good benefit from eating uh, rather a love-hate food, but in my view, a deliciously dark food. So number two is Marmite. Number three on my list, uh, if you've watched the Yummy Yellows video, you'll have seen I talked about piccalilli, uh, which traditional was sort of as being a, a bit of a Christmas food. And this is another one in a similar category. So this is a jar of pickled walnuts. Now, I haven't eaten these for a long time. I've just got back into them again. Now, these are from a family firm and they've been making them since 1880. So again, it's a bit of a traditional food and uh, I think it should be in our diet all year round. Now, walnuts uh, are supposed to be again good, good for our brains and have other health benefits. These are green walnuts. So they're picked before they develop that hard shell and then they are pickled. And when they're done, they are like this. There's a pickled walnut there. Um, so, sorry, just come up there a bit. So that's, it's really easy to cut. I've just cut it with a spoon. It goes great. Quite tangy. So really good with something like plowmans. Would be good with fish and chips, actually. Uh, or any kind of fish, with cheese, with meats. Uh, you could add them to a salad, for example, chopped up. So really soft, really nice to eat. And um, 
definitely not just for Christmas. So please be a pickled walnut fan. Go out and find yourself uh, pickled walnuts on the shelves. You should find them in your in your local supermarket, bigger supermarkets, and um, maybe bring them back into your diet or try them for the first time if you've never done so before. So number three, deliciously dark foods, pickled walnuts. Now, number four and five, uh, are related to or named after places uh, related to places uh, that, that mean a lot to me and the first one is Bristol my hometown and this is a blend of peppers called uh, Bristol five blend pepper so it's black peppercorns with green peppercorns white peppercorns pink peppercorns and allspice and if you look there I hope you can see some of those fantastic colours. You can spot a bit of pink there, uh, and the whites and the greens and the black. Um, it smells just absolutely fantastic. Really good aroma. Uh, and pepper does have some health benefits. It's got vitamin C and vitamin K, and it's supposed to be um, a bit of a uh, an antioxidant. So um, it, it does have some some. Uh, things to recommend it in that respect. Um, but it's it just tastes fantastic. So it might just make a difference, um, a bit of a, a change from regular black pepper. If you're trying to reduce your salt intake, maybe this is something you could look at instead. So great seasoning, uh, smells fantastic, tastes really good. Think about uh, Bristol five blend peppers. Not that easy to find. Um, this one is stopped by Waitrose. Uh, you might find it in other places. It's not in my usual supermarket, but it's worth making a special trip for. So, Bristol, I blend pepper. Uh, my final black food today, deliciously dark food, is from uh, a city where I, I was lucky enough to, to work for five years, uh, Sheffield. So a wonderful, wonderful city, further north in England. And this is Henderson's relish. So this is very, uh, very much associated with Sheffield. It's a bit of a, a Sheffield tradition known as Hendo's up there. Uh, so this is from, a again, a family firm from 1885. Apparently only three people know the recipe. So this is water with sugar, tamarind, and the secret mix of spices that, uh, that only three people know. As you can see on here, it's strong and northern. So it does have a similar consistency to uh, Worcester sauce. And like Worcester sauce, you could splash it on your fish and chips or put it in gravies, pies, um, shepherd's pie, for example. Great with cheese, um, cheese on toast with a, a splash of this is very yummy. Again, it smells wonderful. I love the idea of, of hendos in a a champagne flute. Um, uh, it's different from Worcester sauce in that it's there are no anchovies and it's not fermented. So this is fine for vegetarians and vegans. It's also gluten free. So a different kind of relish, something to to splash into your cooking uh, as and when needed. Uh, soups would be another example, and just might make a little change from what you might usually use. So in terms of growing older, they say it's good to keep refreshing what we do, make changes, experiment with different things. We don't need to get stuck in our ways. So please do go out and discover or rediscover some deliciously dark foods. And please let me know if there's anything I missed off the list that you feel should really be on it. So thanks very much for watching. I hope to see you again soon. Please do like and please do send me some comments if you've enjoyed this and, uh, and you have any suggestions. Bye for now.